So let's go ahead and show how to define the loop. We're going to start with a while loop, such as this, while. You type the word while, and then you put your parentheses for your condition, and then your brackets. And basically, anything in your brackets right here will be run as long as this condition is true. When this condition is true, or this condition is checked, uh, better to say, this condition is checked at the beginning of the loop, the code is ran, and then it's checked again. And if it's still true, the code continues to run. So the best way I can say this is, um, let's go ahead and do it like this. We're going to say int um, run equals 10. Okay? And then we're going to basically say cout run C out run end line, okay, and then we'll say run equals run minus one, okay, and in this loop for the for the condition, we're going to say while run is greater than or equal to zero. Remember, we discussed th this operator. That means greater than or equal to zero. Okay? So, moving on, basically, this is going to say, while this is true, do this. And if you look at the end of our code, basically, we're saying we're setting run equal to run minus one. So, the first time the code runs, um, run equals to 10. And then the next time it equals to 9 until it gets to 0 and then it should quit running. So let's run it real quick. And as you can see it did it real quick but it printed off because we're outputting it 10, 9 all the way down to 0. And that's basically what we wanted it to do. Um, one, more, uh, one thing I want to discuss um, that maybe we haven't discussed earlier in the arithmetic because there there really is a lot of arithmetic um, things you can do in C++ that are very interesting and one of them I want to show you now while we're while we're um, while we can use it is this when, when we say run equals run minus one another way in C++ that we can do that is say for it's actually easier less code to write say run equals minus one and what that does is that basically means run equals run minus one. And it would be the same thing if you said run equals plus one. So, so it, let's just run it real quick and you'll see that we get the same result. You're, you're just going to have to visualize. Okay, so it's wrong right there. I was wrong about that. So it, maybe it's minus equals. I, I believe it's minus equals one. Yes, that's right. So I had it backwards. Sorry about that. So, so this right here, this minus equals, or if you did plus equals, is the same thing as saying run equals run minus one. So if we do that, obviously we're going to get the same thing as run equals run minus one, right? Now the one thing about that's dangerous about loops is that you can get caught in an infinite loop. Okay, so that being said, if we did, you know, run plus equals one, that's the same thing as saying run equals run plus one, obviously the variable will never get to zero, and this thing will be caught in an infinite loop. And we're going to go ahead and hit uh, build and run so you can see what happens when, this, uh, when you get in this situation. And as you can see on screen, the number is just adding up very quickly. You can see how fast the processor is clicking through these numbers and going through this loop. I mean, it's almost instantaneous. We'll be at 100,000. This code will be ran 100,000 right about now. You can see we've already ran this code over 100,000 times. And uh, if you get caught in this, um, one thing that I would recommend doing is just pushing Control-C on Windows, and that shuts it down. So if you get caught in an infinite loop on Windows, hit Control-C. But I just kind of wanted to show you what that was. And... Um, so yeah, it, infinite loop, hit control C and get out of it. And that's one thing you need to watch for, you know, when you're doing this is to make sure you 
you get your code right and that you think about it in your head first before you run it so that you don't get caught in one of those infinite loops and have your computer accidentally crash. So there's the difference between minus equals and plus equals. You see how much different the code is. Uh, rather than getting in an infinite loop, it, it quits because this statement is no longer true once run is less than 1. So once it gets to negative 1, uh, it doesn't run anymore and it goes ahead and hits return 0. So that, that is a while loop, okay? So now I want to introduce a do while loop. And a do while loop basically says, do this, anything in here, and then it checks the condition at the end, while run is greater than or equal to zero, okay? And then you put a semicolon. So it's a little bit different syntax. You say do, and then your brackets, and then while, your condition, and then a semicolon. So let, let's see what the difference is between this, having your, having your condition checked at the end of the code rather than the beginning. Well, the difference is this. If we set run equal to negative 5, obviously it's not greater than or equal to 0. But the difference is, is this, that this code will always run at least once. So I'll show you what I mean. Even though run is less than zero, when we run this, the code will still get ran once and it shows it's negative five. Okay, so that's the difference between a while and a do while. But you can still have the same, you know, you say, well, when would I use that? Well, when we get into more practical examples, you'll see these do while and while loops are used interchangeably depending on the situation you know, if you want your code to run at least once, no matter what, then obviously a do while is more appropriate than a while loop. But just to kind of show you that we can still get the same result out of this code as a while loop, we're going to go ahead and set run equal to 10, leave our condition as the same, and then say run minus equals 1. And we should get the same result as before, 10 all the way down through 0. The way a for loops works, you're going to go ahead and set it up the same. You're going to say for your condition and then the brackets, just as you would a while loop or an if statement. You just proceed it, uh, you know, before the condition is where you write for. So the confusing part to many people is the condition inside the for loop and how it works. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, explain it to y'all, but first I'm going to set up a variable. We'll call it um, value, and we'll say um, equal. Actually, the way we're going to do it is, yeah, we'll say value equals zero. Okay, we'll just set value equal to zero. And then here in the for loop, we're going to declare an integer called index, and we're going to set it equal to zero okay and then put a semicolon now just stick with me for a second because that I know right now you're thinking what that's that right there you're declaring something in a condition well this is not the whole condition this is only one-third of the condition so after you declare your variable int index equals to zero we're gonna say index less than 10 and then we'll say index plus plus now I want you to sit here and breathe this in for a second because I know it looks complicated especially if this is your first time ever looking at a for loop so basically what we're doing in this for loop we're declaring index as a variable and setting it equal to zero okay and then we're saying this right here is basically our condition, is what I, I would call the condition aside from these other two. We're, this middle part says do this while loop as long as index is less than 10. And then this third part is what I like to call the increment the incremental part of the for loop this is how much you want to increment each time the loop runs the variable that you're testing index 
And I mentioned earlier in the last tutorial, I believe, that minus equals was the same thing as saying index equals index minus 1. Well, in C++, index plus plus is the same thing as saying index equals index plus 1. So an easier way to write that is to just say index plus plus. And I know uh, we did, you know, something like um, index minus equals uh, 1. Well, another way to do that, actually, in the last tutorial could have just been index minus minus as well. So that's the same thing as saying index minus equals 1. And that's also the same thing as saying index um, minus index equals index minus 1. Just as this is the same thing as saying index. This is the same thing as saying index equals index plus 1. So just keep that in mind. Index plus plus, we're incrementing index by 1 each time the code inside this loop runs. And what I want to do is I want to say C out value indel. And what we'll do is we'll actually add um, we'll add 5 to value each time. So if we run this, you'll see we get 0, 5, 10, all the way up to 45 because this code is ran all the way until index equals 10. And each time this for loop is ran, index is getting incremented by 1. And when index equals 10, that means index is no longer less than 10. And the for loop jumps down here to return 0, and you get process return 0. So just to kind of take, kind of show you a little bit more about it, let me let me actually take out value. We're going to output index is what we'll do instead, and it, and you can actually see what happens to index throughout the for loop. We're going to hit run. Let me um let me get rid of this real quick because it was still open. We're going to hit run, and you can see what happens to index as it goes through the loop. Um, it goes from 0 all the way up to 9, and then the loop ends. So I want you to practice with this for loop. See how you can do different counting exercises and kind of cycle through numbers with this for loop. And, uh, you know, even, even try changing this operator to um, index maybe greater than 10 and see how that changes it. Um, you know, because obviously if we ran this right now, it wouldn't even run it would just return because index starts at 0. So index is never actually greater than 10, so this code never runs. And also I want you to try, you know, you know, obviously we declared index right here, but what if we just said index equals to 0 and uh, we changed this value. We said index right here equals 0. Or we just said int index. Then we don't have to put int right here. We can just write index and we can actually declare it like that. 